On December 17, 2025, a new chapter in global military history officially began, even though it wasn't marked by explosions or open combat. Amid the bitter cold of the Russian winter, Defense Minister Andrei Belyosov made an announcement that has likely shifted defense calculations across the West. The Russian Aerospace Forces, or VKS, have officially taken delivery of two brand new Tupolev T-160M strategic bombers. It is crucial to underline this from the start. These are not merely old airframes that have been repainted or retrofitted. These two units are entirely new war machines, born from scratch at the Kazan Aviation Plant, under the banner of the United Aircraft Corporation. Why is this new production fact so vital? For the past three decades, many global military analysts believed that Russia had lost the industrial capacity to build an aircraft as complex as the T-160. The supply chains of the Soviet era were broken, and the manufacturing technology was thought to be extinct. However, the arrival of these two units at the end of 2025 disproves all those predictions. Russia has proven that it has successfully awakened the sleeping giant, this time using fully modern digital technology standards. The aircraft, nicknamed the White Swan due to its elegance and its bright white anti-nuclear flash paint, holds the record as the heaviest and largest combat aircraft in the world capable of breaking the sound barrier. With its variable sweep wings, it can fly slowly during takeoff and then sweep back to sprint like a rocket at high altitude. And in this 2025 variant, this aerial monster has evolved into something far more terrifying. Let's dissect the heart of the beast first. The most significant change that sets this T-160M apart is the NK-32 Series 02 engine. This is a masterpiece of Russian engineering claimed to be the most powerful jet engine in the world for a bomber-class aircraft. Engineers in Samara have totally overhauled the compressor system and turbine blades. The goal was singular, perfect thermodynamic efficiency. What does this mean on the battlefield? With these new engines, the T-160M gained an additional operational range of up to 1,000 kilometers. This figure of 1,000 kilometers is not just a statistic on paper. It means the White Swan can conduct patrol loops from the Arctic to near the equator and return without the need for risky aerial refueling. This aircraft can dash up to Mach 2.05 to escape pursuit, yet still possesses the deep endurance required for high-duration missions. However, speed and range are not enough in a modern era of warfare saturated with smart missiles. This is where the second revolution lies, self-defense systems. The 2025 variant is equipped with technology we previously only saw in science fiction movies, known as Directional Infrared Countermeasures, or DIRCM. This system is designed to neutralize the deadliest threat to large aircraft, heat-seeking missiles. When the aircraft sensors detect the flash of an enemy missile launch, the computer automatically directs a small laser turret toward the incoming threat. A high-energy laser beam is then fired directly into the missile's sensor eye. The effect is instant. The missile becomes blind, its guidance system scatters, and it veers harmlessly away from the plane. With DIRCM, the T-160M is no longer a sitting duck, even when flying low over territories infested with portable air defense systems. Moving to the brain of the aircraft, the cockpit, Russia has discarded all the analog systems inherited from the 80s. Pilots now work in a fully integrated digital glass cockpit environment. However, the most strategic feature here is the ANS-2001 inertial navigation system. In a global war scenario, the first thing to disappear would be satellite signals like GPS or GLNS due to cyber warfare or anti-satellite attacks. Modern Western aircraft rely heavily on these signals. In contrast, with the ANS-2001, the T-160M possesses independent navigation capabilities. The aircraft's computer calculates movement, speed, and astronomical position with extreme precision without needing any help from space. This makes it a weapon that is remarkably resilient in conditions of total electronic warfare. Of course, the primary function of a strategic bomber is its destructive power. 
The T-160M retains the design of two massive weapons bays in its belly, containing rotary drum launchers. Its carrying capacity reaches 40 tons, but the types of weapons carried have been adapted to the latest war doctrines. Its flagship weapons are the KH-101 cruise missiles for conventional targets and the KH-102 for nuclear strikes. Both missiles feature stealth characteristics, making them difficult for enemy radar to detect. But the most terrifying aspect is their range. These missiles are capable of striking targets 5,500 kilometers with high accuracy. The combination of the aircraft's extended range from the new engines and the extreme range of the missiles creates what is known as standoff capability. This means the T-160M can unleash a deadly attack into the heart of Europe or North America without needing to ever leave the safety of Russian airspace. They could fly from above Siberia and the missiles would fly autonomously to destroy targets on another continent. This renders enemy air defense systems largely irrelevant as they cannot shoot down a launch platform that is thousands of kilometers out of reach. Geopolitically, the handover of these two units in December 2025 is a move to strengthen Russia's nuclear triad. The nuclear triad consists of land-based ballistic missiles, nuclear submarines, and strategic bombers. Of the three, bombers are the most flexible. An aircraft can be flown as a warning, recalled after takeoff, or repositioned to various bases to confuse the enemy. With a total fleet now reaching approximately 19 units and the Russian Ministry of Defense's ambitious target to possess 50 T-160Ms, Moscow is building the largest strategic air force of the 21st century. This is a direct response to NATO expansion and the development of the B-21 Raider bomber by the United States. This step serves as a showcase of Russia's economic resilience. Amid tight technology sanctions, the ability to independently produce microelectronics, laser systems, and jet engine metallurgy is an industrial achievement that cannot be underestimated. The Kazan plant has transformed into a symbol of the resurgence of the nation's military technological sovereignty. In conclusion, the 2025 production T-160M is not just about adding numbers, it is about a leap in quality. With more efficient engines, laser defense systems, anti-jamming navigation, and long-range missiles, the White Swan has transformed from a Cold War relic into an apex predator of the modern skies. Its presence ensures that the balance of global nuclear terror is maintained, forcing world leaders to think twice before taking aggressive steps. The skies at the end of 2025 might look calm, but behind the clouds, this white-winged giant is now flying with a power that is far more lethal. What are your thoughts on the resurrection of this aerial legend in the modern era? Will this technology shift the global power map?